I'm hanging up my cape. I can't do it all. Okay. I never said I could. Somebody wanted to see if I could and I did, but I don't have to do it all. And I'm telling you one thing, I'm going to hang that apron up and somebody else can come do the cooking and cleaning right now because I got to make the money. Hey guys, welcome back to the Tuesday podcast. I am Chris Cavallari. I'm sitting here and I'm struggling because I'm looking for my notebook. And one thing, I, I guess this is for me to tell you because I need to tell it to myself. You don't need another motherfucking journal. You don't need another notebook or a journal. You know why? Or you do. Maybe you need to get rid of all of the old. No. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell, tell it to myself because one thing for sure, I keep purchasing journal, well, not journals, notebooks. And when it's time for me to have it, to go back to refer to my notes, I don't have them. It's at home. It's in a car. It's in the other purse. And I swear I had my notebook here with me today. So I'm not going to say we don't need notebooks. We need one or we need to just be aware of where it's at. Like I want a personal book. I want a home notebook. And to be honest, all my thoughts are scattered through different notebooks. And I was looking, <laughs> I was looking through my phone and I'm like, maybe they're in my phone. No, they're in my old phone. That won't cut back on because you know what it is though? Oh, I know what it is. Wow. wow. The times that I have these moments is so funny to me because it's the fresh start. If I found that notebook that I had for five years, and although there's a lot of blank pages in there because I may have written in there two, four, five, six, seven, eight times, confirmation, slam the door. What's in there does not reside here anymore. And that's the craziest part. So, yes, I need a new notebook. And those old notebooks that we have sometimes, and we just, you know, it's like, um, it's, it's, two entries then it's some scribble scrabble from your kids then it's like a random number that you don't know what it's for or whatever I literally have realized just now for real not no 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 bullshit those notebooks have notes in it from being hurt they have Manifest. There's too many different things in there. There needs to be a, and I and that's the thing. I did get like a three packer, and I just realized one is for topics that I want to have conversations about. Especially, I leave that one, and I changed my bag this morning. I leave that one in my bag, so whenever a thought comes up, I could just jot it down. I changed my bags this morning, so I think I should leave it in my car. Um, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna leave it in my car. This, and then the other two are blank because I figured I would have one for podcasts. I would have one for, you know, just letters to myself about how the day's been going, manifestations, things of that nature. And the third one, I figured I would have it for other, you know, work ideas that I have because sometimes I'm out and I'm like, OK, I want to do this content for is it Tuesday? I want to do this content for Icon. And the, the beautiful thing about having the event space, the content studio. Um, and I say event space now because a lot of people are coming to have art shows. They're coming to have private events. But the beautiful thing about that is I can record right now. I'm recording my podcast in my studio in Icon. And it's just a, a full circle moment. So when I'm making that content for one thing, I can use it for both things. So that one notebook could be for both things because it's everything, all, everything and all things iconic will be in that journal. And I'm sitting here and I'm like, damn, where's these notes at? Where's these notes at? Where's these notebooks? But I realized even the old notebooks, they had topics in there or things in there that no longer serve my highest self and where I'm headed and what, what I'm in the transitioning place to get to. And I just was like taking a quick break and I was looking on my phone and I heard just heard this, this man say, a lot of people aren't looking in a the mirror. They're looking outside the window and we're looking. And that's so funny because as he said that, I was like, yo, when I talk about mirror work and I talk about how I didn't realize it, I've always loved to dance. I've even lied a little bit and told people, and I love this lie. It's like my favorite lie to tell, which is when you hear it, you're going to be like, okay, these are lies. If somebody's going to lie, this is the type of lie, like it's a fun lie. 
<laughs> it's a fun lie. I love saying to people, I was on and live in color. I was a backup dancer. Like I was on the left of Jennifer Lopez because people would literally go and Google and be like, I didn't see the picture, girl, because I'm do the math. But that's how easy it is to trick somebody. People are like, oh my God, I thought I seen you. No, you didn't. I was eight. You didn't see me. But I love to dance. And I remember being younger and I've always been like sensual with my dancing. And this is why when I see little girls and they're just being like, Whew, she's so grown and she's so this. I'm like, y'all don't, let's not sexualize everything. Now, there are some little people, kids dancing to things that they shouldn't be dancing to or whatever. But I remember, that is my fondest memory as a kid, like just dancing, going to the school and we got like a talent show. And I'm like, oh, we dancing to this. And it's like Janet Jackson. It's like, no, you're not. You're dancing to this kid's bop. Um, but I've always loved dancing. And I even when I went to the club, like my clubbing days, I like dancing, but I don't want you to dance on me. Don't first of all, don't 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 lend it, don't lint ball up my dress. Don't grind your jeans on me and to go blue. Don't don't do all of that. Don't rub all of that on me. I just want you to watch. And I've realized that over the years when I started to heal myself. I was doing a lot of mirror work and I did not know that that's what that was at the time. I literally was just dancing. I would prop my phone up in my kitchen when I lived in the loft and I would just, it would just be this background behind me. And I just, I love dancing. I love being in tune with my body. I love that. And I got in trouble a few times when I was younger and I was just like, just dancing, you know, but I think about that because when a guy said looking, you know, you look to the mirror, a lot of people don't like looking at themselves. A lot of people are so um, like, you know, you just cover up or whatever. You just, you know, you don't like this. Your body's changed or whatever. You don't understand the power. It is just dancing in that mirror even if don't always gotta be a little one too but even just looking at yourself out the shower looking at yourself in the eyes like literally sometimes I looked in the mirror so long I cried remember that scene on poetic justice yeah remember Janet did that that probably was a real a real moment for her but I've looked at myself plenty of times and I just like and pure like wow or you know sometimes you don't even see you you can see a picture of you and be like that's me that's what I look like like oh because you just been you know avoiding that deep work with yourself to just like just just looking so I love dancing but when he just said that look in the mirror and not you know out the window it's like we looking we constantly looking for something else to make us feel validated make us feel good make us feel all of these things when it's like the power for real, for real, making, making yourself feel these things are just unbelievable, unbelievable. Um, you know, I'm, I'm considering having a small, intimate dinner party situation. My birthday is coming up. And I just think about, like, the only thing that I think is missing in here is, like, a dance studio type of mirror. Like, a whole wall of mirrors that just, you can just... Especially at uh, at sunset, put put some music on, go to a mirror, and dance with yourself is a beautiful. It's a freeing thing. It's like a thing that makes you feel like uh. And it's funny because my son loves to dance, loves music, and I'm just thinking like when I was dancing and you know looking at myself in a mirror, you know, I never realized how slowly. That was building up my confidence. That was building me back up. Um, and, I, and I think that it's important. It's important to look at yourself. Not just when you're done up. Like when you don't feel your best. Like just to look and appreciate all the things that your body has gotten you through. Um, your hair, you know. Right now I'm rocking my fro and it's funny because my hair was never this thick. I, you know, it was never given, it was never given, like it was, 
it was this is hair okay and it's funny because a lot of people say like oh yeah what have you done da, da, da. i'm like we don't realize that being connected to certain energies and people can really have your hair falling out being brittle and thin have you breaking out have you gained like it could be a lot of things that your your physical would transform to with all of these things going on but as i, I as i grow closer to 40 i'm really liking what I see in the mirror and it's not all where it used to be or it's not all perfect but I'm really appreciative and I always joke and say like if you could look like this at 40 you cool until you 60 like you cool because you know you got something to work with and it's really it's not just the physical it's just like the feeling of it like I feel my best I want to dance right now like I'm thinking about it. today is the day <laughs> I typically always dance in here and if we're we're being you know talking about dancing think about the music and the sounds that you're listening to um I'm really considering doing like a playlist y'all been asking for a playlist for a long time I'm thinking about doing a playlist and then I'm thinking about having a small intimate dinner little party and I think that you should come I think that it will be like a is it Tuesday like girls link up small finger foods like nice music some mirrors like just dancing and dancing like nobody's watching hmm you know what makes me happy when you see that I don't know where this came from so I'm just gonna say it I use that I use this app to like track like you're spending and I'm very excited to say that most of my spending is for work. <laughs> like I'm, I'm surprised, but I'm, I'm seeing that and I'm just starting to realize how once you get your physical, like it doesn't, it's not always going to be 100%, but once you start decluttering and starting to, you know, just in like really you could really see how your hair is growing, your bank account's growing, your you're just abundant all over the place. And this just was just for real, for real, for real, for real confirmation, because I'm always sitting here like just going, just going, just going. But to a nice feeling to have is to see that something is actually on track that I'm not obsessing over. That's a good, that's a good feeling. I'm liking this. I'm liking this for me. I'm, I'm, oh, I'm really liking this for me. I think that I'm right now before, what's this? This is, oh, we only got a couple months until the new year. And the goals that I have set, I think I'm going to meet them all. I know I'm going to meet them all. I don't want to say I think, I know I'm going to meet them all. I know that. Right now, I've been really intentional, and it feels it feels weird still to be a responsible adult. It feels weird. Sometimes I can see how people get stuck in that like twenty year old like vibe. Like it'd be it'd be a lot of no, it'd be women too still going to the still doing certain things that they done when they was younger. I about to be shady and be like still doing this and doing that, but shit, your idea of fun is your idea. But I think about how graceful I'm becoming in all areas. Like <laughs> I'll be so confused. Like who is this lady? But just to think about doing the mirror work, becoming that lady, still staying that lady and then not being uh, not being is this confirmation or something and then not being um fake like sometimes you think that sometimes you, you people be like you faking it and it's really nice when you realize i'm gonna ask this question and and i i don't know how this is going to sound but i'm going to do it any way so because everything is going away, it's going, I am a single mom that has multiple businesses, um, gratefully, because that's real wood. I have multiple businesses that, first of all, I never sought out to be an entrepreneur. I know most people are going to be like, really? No, I just could not keep it. I, I was always getting in trouble for the way I dressed. I was always, you know, having questions. And I know that my purpose was bigger than working at a job and nothing's wrong with a job. Don't quit. Um, but I'm talking about me. I 
did not seek after entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship kind of really just fell in my lap. And it was like things that I'm good at naturally is what has led me to become an entrepreneur. And now I have not one business, but three. And it's really exciting. But as a single mom, it's like, damn, I got all of this stuff to do in this and that and that. So I am currently in the process of finding a nanny. Black women deserve nannies. Black children deserve nannies too. I don't care what nobody said. You know, yes, you can drop them off at your moms and your sisters and your cousins and the stand the third. But I'm going to be honest and I might get a little flack for this. When you have... When somebody, I'm at the stage now that you don't have to watch him, but whenever you want to get him or whatever you want to hang out and have QT with him, that's when you can. Anything other than that, he can come with me. He can go to camp or he, his nanny can get him because that is their job. I said it. I said it. It's something about paying for help that knows it and assures that your job is going to get done. This is the dilemma that I just had when I just picked up my phone and, you know, I'm going to be honest because of what I do and because of my presence at first, I did not feel this way. Right. And I think I want to say like one time I had ordered groceries or something and a person that I know like deliver my food or something. And I remember this lady saying to me like, oh yeah, you know, you got to change your name. Like it shouldn't be your name because they, they could just leave your groceries outside and they don't have to know that this is where you live because it is a compromising situation. So I purposely use a different, like a different name. Do I use my name on this app? I purposely use a different name. Let me see what I have my name. Oh no, it's not under there. Ain't no pictures or nothing. But anyway, I have jobs, a job listed for a nanny. And right now I'm doing interviewing and things of that nature. It's going to sound so funny, but it's okay. It's okay. I do not. I do not want anyone that looks I need to change this time that looks like me that um could possibly follow me on social platforms that's the same thing as an, wanting an assistant or someone you know uh I'm, I'm definitely looking for employees and stuff like that I could deal with employees and maybe yeah employees but an assistant or a nanny I don't want you to follow me on Instagram I don't want you to been following me for six years that gives me I know you and oh my god girl I was at her house so there's this one girl there's this let me see how many people I have about eight people that are interested out of the eight oh yeah she look like she shop icon uh, it ain't gonna be you. Yeah. No. My, oh, well, wait a minute now. I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna keep it buck. Because those type of jobs allow people to get close to you. They're in your home. They're with your children. They have access to your personal items. Me having somebody in there is just giving me giving me no. I'll be honest with you. I prefer. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. I joke around all the time and be like, if I have another baby, I'm getting a nanny and she coming in from like, Guala, Guala, like she coming in from somewhere else. She's like, she coming in from Guatemala or something, Chile. She's she's just coming in from there. And I say that and it sounds so funny because you don't want to put a race on, you know, certain things. But I just feel like her, that or an African like grandmother or something. I don't want no young nothing, a nanny, like especially if she a living. But what I'm thinking about right now is, and I never thought about this before, but I'm starting to realize people do know you. There are monitoring spirit. There's people around you like that you may not know, but they know you. And I just feel like anybody that's under, like in my age group or look like me or look like they shot my brand, I'm automatically saying no. Like this, this, these two girls, they look like they have no idea who I am. They don't know what I do. They don't care about nothing. But to have a stranger in your space, 
and then they are but they're not really a stranger just scares you know could scare somebody like oh my gosh i don't want no single white female so i'm gonna have to decline her yeah i don't want her she is beautiful she she look like she know me i don't want her beth now beth <laughs> let me see if beth is like let me see it's funny i'm sorry that well i'm not sorry i'm not sorry about here because this is how i will be talking to you anyway I would love to help out on Saturday. Please take a moment and review my profile. Let me see her. Oh, I like her. I like her. The, <laughs> the only thing I don't know about, and, you know, I have a, a few friends that are on here that are others. So, you know, understand that you will never understand where I'm coming from as a black mother or black woman. So we can all have community, but there are certain things that you will not understand because you are not in this, in this body skin, whatever, because my son goes to a predominantly white school. I'm not sure. If I want a older white lady like right now, to be honest, his sports that he's in, he has black, a black coach. And that's the balance that I have to have with him going to a predominantly white school. Like when it comes to other curriculums, activities, I want it to be people that look like him. So he doesn't lose his identity with himself and his culture. And I know that sometimes like when you see kids, they go to predominantly white schools, they say it could a, either be really, really hard because there's nobody that looks like them and they feel left out and, or, or they have, um, identity issues. Like, you know, my son's hair is, I dyed his locks, but it was great for us us to do but he was like oh I want a blonde like this and I was like well we're this is dye so it's gonna be like a honey blonde and you know before his locks came back he was like he wants to put them over to the side and it's so funny and small because they don't know but they just want to be you know they want to do what their friends do but it's really important to me that he has a balance like yes there's his school friends luckily in his new class there were other African-American children but the first year he was the only black kid in his class. And I think that that was a little, that was a, a culture shock because he went, came from a school that only had one white kid in his class. But when I'm looking at these nannies, um, I'm looking at these nannies and I see that. And I'm like, you know, I don't really want nobody that might know me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or the podcast. Um, and I also don't want a lady that looks like, you know, I don't want him to think that all I don't want him to feel like the person that's always in control of the situation as far as school or home or whatever is a white person. I got it out. I said it. I don't. I don't. That's a dangerous game to play with a black son, especially a black son with an absent father. You understand what I'm saying? So his barber's black. His karate teacher is black. His soccer coach was a black man. Um, I don't know how we, well, I know how we got here. We're talking about nannies and we're talking about the assistance that's needed. Um, you know, even, <laughs> you know, we talked about mirror work, but I'm literally sitting here and I'm looking and I said, now that I'm in this position, a nanny that comes over maybe once a week, you know, twice a week, maybe like um, like one, maybe on Tuesday and then maybe on Saturday, whatever the case may be, um, just for a few hours so I can run my errands and do the things kids don't want to leave the house once they in the house. But I, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about how I'm curating his community at this moment. And we talked about it for a while. Like, hey, how would you feel about a nanny? Um, whatever, because his friend had a, had a sitter. Um, sitter just sounds like, you know, I like nanny better. Um, sounds a little bit more. So, um, I'm, I'm on this app and I'm looking through nannies and sitter, you know, nannies or whatever. And I'm looking and the lady that I really, she seems like she qualifies. She just, she just, she, she different, but she looked like she could be his teacher or his last year's teacher. She looks like that. And I love his teachers. First of all, shout out to his teacher. I love, love, love. Well, his last year's teacher, but this lady, she give me like faculty and I don't want, she give me 
Yeah, she gave me fal- 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 faculty. She does have three sons. Anyway, I'm going to look at this later. But that's if you understand what I'm saying, please let me know. Um, you know, we want the best for our children, but sometimes in these situations, are they the best? So right now I'm, I'm asking questions like, hey, how do you feel about going to, like, how do you feel? He's the other day, he said, you know, I only have, it's only, I only have, all my friends are white. And I was like, well, what about, he's like, oh, well, no, this person, this person, this person. But I said, do you miss your other friends? Do you miss your other friends? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, let's call him up, whatever, whatever. But I'm going to be honest with you. The consistency with his other friends were not, was not there. So I think he just needs to understand friendship is is not based on who looks like you. Um, it's a lot raising kids, isn't it? It's a lot raising kids, but it's a lot raising black boys. It's a lot raising black boys alone. And the deeper I get into this topic, because you see how this is just gradually going somewhere else, God, okay. Um, I think about that. I think about how, yes, there's things that I can do, but there's things that I cannot teach a black boy. You know, there's things that I used to be very terrified that he would miss out on. And so I started curating his 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 uh, healthy male experience. And it's something I've worried about a lot. I've worried about this so much just because it's like, you always see people say like, oh, boys is with their mom too much. That's why they act like this. Or, you know, they don't have a healthy balance or whatever. But I really am grateful for the men in Goliath's life right now. Um, I was, it's crazy because I asked, I was like, would you want a male nanny? But that just gives me... I, Kim did it, but that don't give me, I want to have a male nanny. Um, it's already a lot going on, but I'm really just looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, I could be, um, I could be very much so trying to be superwoman or I could allow the help in. I could allow the fact that I am in a position to hire help. I mean, to, to say, okay, on Saturday, just for like, three four hours they can come and his man in his man cave and they can hang out um this is a lot this single this this single this single this i don't even want to call it single parenting because you could be single and still co-parent you can be a parent and still you know do that's that's not it excuse me hello Look how tired I am. Mm. Child and nanny is coming. She got to do light chores. She got to go ahead and make the food. Like all of that. Like you could do it all. I, I'm hanging up my cape. I can't do it all. Okay. I never said I could. Somebody wanted to see if I could and I did. But I don't have to do it all. And I'm telling you one thing. I'm going to hang that apron up and somebody else can come do the cooking and cleaning right now. Because I got to make the money tired okay <laughs> but anyway i'm gonna find a nanny i'm gonna keep you guys updated let me know would you feel comfortable with someone that follows you on social media and that's the thing we think that especially me i'm the most person like oh people don't know me and then they then it's like no but there are people that know you that you do not know i just prefer for it not to be someone that i know someone that looks like they can sh they shot my brand and now they in my house and that's the thing people are like oh well, that's good yeah but now they think they got the inside scoop they might be snooping through your shit they might it's, it's so many things i feel like a, a teenage i feel like a a college student a college student will be good for a nanny Somebody that don't know me because I'm 40. You know what I'm saying? Like she don't, she don't know. She don't care about my old ass. So she's not in, she's not in the rooms that we're in. She's not thinking about the things that we're thinking about. That's the lady I want. I'm gonna keep y'all posted because I'm gonna do some mirror work and I'm gonna pray on it and I'm gonna find me a nanny because I'm going out on Saturday. Okay. Thank you for joining in to Is It Tuesday podcast. I'm Chris Cavallari. Mm -hmm.